Hello, welcome to the regular uh, Jenkins Configuration as Code project meeting. Today is uh, May 6th and we just run the common agenda. We will talk about news, about uh, JCASC releases and plugin compatibility fixes, and then everything about ongoing development and uh, other project stories. So we have uh, four participants on the call. It's uh, John, uh, Tim, Adrian, and me. And yeah, unless uh, there are more topics to, to the agenda, I suggest to just uh, go through these ones. Hmm. Actually, I have one. Uh, yeah. We will have a UI UX online hackathon. So I'd like to discuss briefly today. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at news. Uh, so last time we met on April 25th, at that point we had uh, one JCASC release, I guess, not. Mm. I guess uh, the current version is 1.39, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically we had no releases since the last meeting. Uh, though uh, there are some ongoing changes. Um, yeah, from what I see, we finally integrated the uh, bomb folder zero into the plugin. And yeah, thanks a lot to team for uh, keeping the bill of materials integration in place. So I guess we will still need to integrate this session. So yeah, no new releases. And what about plugin compatibility or the stories? Mm, do you have something for those weeks? I guess not. I don't think anything's been merged that I know of. Okay. There's, there's one or two open PRs. And... Oh, yeah, it was a quite uh, silent week. Yeah, some people were busy with Google Summer of Code, other people were just pulling core release automation. Uh, and yeah, but still there is some ongoing pointers. So yeah, regarding ongoing development, we had a bunch of stories discussed at the last meeting. Uh, so I guess all of them um, are still going on. So bill of materials, system read permissions, anything else? Uh, okay. So for system read permissions, uh, thanks to team, we get more and more changes in the change log. And I guess we got uh, all major fixes um, in the 2.235. No, there's one left. Oops. I was uh, going back and forth with Daniel on Sunday, trying to get it in. Um, uh, but he, is, uh, he didn't. He, he didn't. Sorry, uh, uh, as agents is not there yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. he did, I think he didn't have time to re-review it, but we had a. We got it almost done. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that. So we still uh, got a decent <laughs> number of changes um, in this week. Yeah? So why it's important that uh, this weekly is likely to be the new LCS baseline. Uh, but yeah, we'll just keep working on these and other changes uh, in the next releases. There is still a lot of things that we could do to enhance system read permission. And this is actually one of the reasons why I brought up the UI UX online hackathon. Um, because uh, it's our opportunity to facilitate some contributions around this story. Uh, and yeah, I would like to discuss it uh, with uh, other JCAS contributors. Have you already seen the announcement? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so. So, long story short, we would like to have an online hug fest um, in late May. So tentatively starting on uh, May 25th, and it's likely to be a five-day event, or maybe we'll uh, roll over it over the weekend, so it would be seven or eight days. Uh, the idea is to facilitate uh, contributions around uh, user experience, 
So what it means, uh, user interface, user documentation, and uh, also collecting uh, success stories uh, about, from uh, Jenkins users and uh, share their experiences. So there is a proposal in the developer uh, mailing list about that. Um, we will uh, have a meeting tomorrow on advocacy and outreach uh, meeting, and after that, uh, if everything is approved, I will uh, start uh, publishing the website for this event, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and yeah, uh, the uh, interesting question there is with stories we could uh, address. And for me, one of the interesting stories for configuration as code is, of course, a read-only interface. So it's not read-only interface for system configurations and also for job configurations. So one of the changes team did uh, one month ago, uh, he applied uh, the same uh, job 224 engine uh, to job configurations. And actually, we could uh, continue working on this topic. Maybe there are some new friendly tasks or advanced topics. So that, uh, yeah. We could basically improve uh, experience of Jenkins admins and common users who don't have uh, right permissions to the instance. And I think it would be beneficial for the stories overall. So question to you, does it make sense? Uh, do we have an opportunity to find enough newbie friendly tasks and not so newbie friendly ones there? Uh, I've added two newbie friendly ones to the epic. They both shouldn't be very much work. Mm -hmm. But I'm planning on leaving them for other people to pick up. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, for system read for admins, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so another one is uh, ex extended read uh, for jobs. I didn't test it so much, but my impression is that uh, there is still a lot of controls we would need to modify. Uh, to improve work mm, on the yeah, field. Yeah, pipe, pipeline should probably have an issue raised for that. Um, I think the pipeline looks pretty horrible um, with extended read at the moment. I'm going to try to get the video. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm jealous. And uh, yeah, another story which was uh, recently uh, well revealed by uh, Daniel Beck and team is extended read for agents. Uh, because yeah, technically we have support of that uh, inside of the Jenkins core. But yeah, uh, as far as I know, nobody has ever used that. We have extended read plugin. Uh, it also doesn't enable this permission. So was it, was, me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was added seven years ago for like one or two API endpoints and no UI. Uh, yeah, so most likely it doesn't work. Most likely it's Pandora box, but uh, if somebody is willing to test that and maybe get it fixed, it would be also nice. Uh, so the reason uh, is not permanent agents. It's quite rare that people have access to configuration without uh, being able to, the, to do that. But for cloud agents, it would totally make sense. Um, so, if uh, we, we could edit that, well, technically it uses Job 224 agent uh, engine as well. And in the most cases, uh, people who use extended read for agents would also have system read. And maybe we should even adjust inheritance before publicly. Well, the PR for that. The PR for that's open and very close to merging. Okay. It's been had many iterations with me and Daniel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically it would be box crop, uh, yeah. Uh, I think fixing stuff. Okay, but still it will be a good improvement. So anything else we could uh, consider for hackathon uh, except system read permissions? Yeah, maybe it's actually enough. Okay, 
So yeah, if you have any other ideas in mind, please comment in the developer mailing list uh, or there will be uh, more documents. But yeah, I will be working on initial landing and I will add a uh, job two to four, well, basically these stories there, maybe as a separate ones. And, and yeah, I hope it will uh, help us to facilitate changes there. So the next story is bill of materials. I just checked this morning. We still have uh, a pull request with um, uh, Jenkins configuration as code plugin update. Uh, this one. And my understanding that we are still blocked uh, by uh, JFASC test harness dependencies and uh, other fun stuff. Is that right, Kim? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we briefly discussed it at the last meeting. I was thinking about uh, doing, uh, so we will need to fix a uh, plugin compatibility tester. So it's a development utility which verifies plugin compatibility. Uh, and I guess uh, the main problem for us is to have a uh, configuration as code test harness uh, manageable uh, with PCT. And in order to do so, we will likely need to include it in plugin POM. So this part is doable, and uh, I'm happy to help with it. But there is also uh, a separate part. We will need to update all plugins, which uh, explicitly include uh, um, uh, Jenkins, uh, sorry, uh, Jcast test harness. We will need to upgrade them to the new plugin form version. And it means that we will uh, need to, uh, to upgrade them to 4.0. So I just wanted to have a sanity check whether it's possible, uh, whether we are ready to invest time in that. I don't quite understand how that would fix <clears throat> this sort of thing happening again. So with the plugin POM, they would have an explicit version, say 1.40, but then we do another change like this in 1.42. Won't they still be using 1.40 from the plugin POM? Well, uh, so assuming that uh, uh, JCASC test harness um, is stable enough so that the library can test multiple versions of uh, JCASC plugin, mm. it should be, uh, it should work well. It's basically the same we hit with Jenkins yeah. test harness uh, like eight years ago or so, because originally it was also highly tied uh, to Jenkins core versions. But mm -hmm. now you can use uh, Jenkins test harness <coughs> with multiple core versions, and the range is actually pretty wide. Yeah, so, I, mean, I think I think this is just quite a special case, really. Mm -hmm. um, it could also be fixed by just changing script. By if if we released a back a backported version with the snake YAML change, and then um, bumping script security to use that version, um, it just needs to be have. It just needs a version of JCast that's compatible with snake YAML um, API plugin. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd have to release a version um, that has a minimum version of 2.164, or I think it is, um, that has the snake YAML PR plus the bug fix on top. It's probably quite a low effort fix. Yeah. And that one should be doable. So uh, basically, you think that uh, PCT is not needed uh, to get uh, this uh, landed? No, it's only a, it's only script security that's currently affected, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't quite. Yeah, I mean, there's many different ways. There's there's multiple different ways to fix it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but maybe fix maybe a good way to to do it is to split the two things apart because there's no. I, I know we're using it for test sources ourselves, but what we could probably do is split it out so that the test harness is is separated out as a separate release. Mm -hmm. So they don't follow inversions. We don't really change the source that much. Well, uh, there is the uh, even a more aggressive change uh, we could do. We could include mm. JCast test harness right inside the Jenkins test harness. <laughs> uh, uh, because why not? Uh, we, already, uh, we already had some cases of that when mm. we were working on role strategy performance. So basically, Jenkins test harness includes some extensibility engine, which can be extended by for JCast plugin, or doing uh, benchmarking of plugins. 
And theoretically, we already depend on some uh, plugins here. Uh, if mm. I recall correctly, we have something like matrix authorization. It's well, it's a test scope. Uh, yeah, also JCASC is also in the test scope. But in principle, uh, nothing blocks us from uh, putting uh, the code uh, directly there. I would be up for that because it's it's what it's like. Yeah, it's a small package that's a few files, right? Mm. Yeah. So There's, yeah, we we might need a separate test package for us created because I think I think we have a number of tests inside of the test harness module, which uh, because of um, mm. because we're testing stuff that requires the test harness functionality, um, but we don't we don't want circular dependencies inside of our code because test harness depends on JCASC. So we might need our own test module, which depends on test harness. Okay, if you do a test model, it's better to do it in a, as a separate repository, because in such case, you would also have separate release cycle, and we will still have depend bot or whatever picking it up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we could uh, convert the Jenkins test harness to multi-model repository, uh, but in, I don't think uh, it would improve situation a lot. So. If uh, we really cannot avoid circle dependencies, then yeah, separate model. I, I still think we could separate it out, yeah, and then have the test still use the test harness that we have because it, uh, mm -hmm. it it's just there for for calculating the. Yes. For the yeah, sure. so, so I think separating out would help at least. Ish. It should be doable, but I still I think we st we still need to do something to get over this breaking change. Um, yeah, that's true. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's multiple things. So and the other option is fixing PCT to update properties yeah. rather than um, um, rather than just overwriting a specific dependency value. Yeah. So if you need uh, to fix PCT, uh, I'm up to do that. Though. Any change with uh, PC, uh, in PCT comes uh, with some risk because there are multiple modes of PCTs running. There is already a lot of uh, dark magic uh, in uh, the implementation. Yes, so for, I've, I've gone through the code. <laughs> well, we improved the code a lot over the past uh, two years uh, when we started productizing that, but uh, still. So, for example, there is a hook engine, and all multimodal repositories need hooks to properly discover components. And we could use this hook engine uh, to write versions, but yeah. Uh, well, we already have configuration as uh, code hook, by the way. Which basically, yeah, it's just a parent locator, though. Yeah. Well, we can uh, add more logic, like uh, overriding uh, the library there. Because, for example, we can say that uh, in uh, this in PCT, if you test against the JCASC version, your JCASC uh, test harness should be always the same version as JCASC plugin. Well, uh, for the moment, yeah. it makes sense unless we split it out. And yeah, it can be implemented in code. Though. I would really like uh, to have a plugin form for that, but even without plugin form, it's doable. Yeah, there's, there's many options. Okay. Many so, things. Yeah, I can uh, make a try and implement the uh, plugin compact tester change. Yeah, maybe a question to other. Uh, what would be the downstream impact if you do that? Because uh, yeah, at CloudBees we use a plugin compatibility tester a lot. Um, and yeah, I wonder whether such change in uh, plug, uh, plugin hooks would uh, cause any problems. I can have a look. Mm -hmm. I can have a look at that. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to code something, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'll just uh, add an action item for me to create a test patch. Yeah, I'm 
still not sure whether we will need more changes to get it running, but yeah, I will try. Okay, anything else about Bomb? So, so we have a number of other stories like say Jinx service, Gcask, Syncrit encryption, integrator API. Uh, I guess uh, there is no updates on uh, these stories, so we can safely uh, skip them today. And any other ongoing development uh, we should mention? Or any any other pull requests or whatever where help is needed. Not on my side. Mm. Nothing JKS related, really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the CIG can say I was just stuck with getting AWS account set up properly um, mm -hmm. rather than using the Cloudbees one that's all manually managed and no one else can have access to it at the moment. Yeah, I didn't have access either for the record. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have an action item to get it fixed, uh, but uh, yeah, it might take a while. Uh, okay, um, maybe I do. I will check. So, mm, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I wanted to discuss switching to a new Zoom account. So just uh, to clarify, uh, right now we use an experimental uh, CDF Zoom account, but we got um, a separate one for the Jenkins project. And I'm currently working on uh, process updates so we can uh, give uh, project leaders, seek leaders access uh, to the Zoom account. Uh, and here inside edge case, we want to uh, need uh, me, Mark Wait, uh, Marky, or somebody else uh, to record the meetings on official account. And then, yeah, my question is whether is everybody fine with switching starting from the next meeting? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Tim, I will uh, share permissions with you. Uh, still, it's a kind of shared account, but uh, yeah, I think we can do that. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay, and that's it. Do we have any other topics to discuss today? No. Okay, so yeah, maybe a quick update from me. So we have got a number of Google Summer of Code projects uh, announced uh, just uh, on Monday. And there are some projects which are actually related to Jenkins configuration as code. For example, Sladen, uh, he was our community bridge mentee working on JCAS Dev Tools. Uh, this summer he will, build, uh, he will be working on a custom Jenkins distribution build service. So a service which allows to define the configuration, including JCASC, and build the uh, ready-to-fly uh, images for Docker, for word files. So basically like custom word packager works, but the service. Um, and yeah, I believe there will be some changes related to JCASC there. And also there are other projects like fingerprints, uh, in GitHub checks API, uh, machine learning, which will likely include some level of uh, GCASP related changes there, maybe more. So, uh, you know, this summer uh, we like to get some contributions. And maybe even a more optimistic topic is about uh, Jenkins Windows Services YAML, because once we switch uh, it to YAML, we will be able to use uh, the same Jenkins YAML to configure as a service if you run on videos. And if you want to do the same on other platforms like Kubernetes, uh, we could also uh, see how we could integrate uh, JCASC and uh, unified YAML. It's a moonshot, but uh, technically it's possible. 
So yeah, mm, hopefully you will uh, get something new out of this Google Summer of Code. I guess that's it uh, from me. And yeah, thanks to everybody. Uh, are there any other topics before we close the meeting? Okay, I guess not. So yeah, thanks a lot uh, to everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.